This video series is looking at how to make a snowman. This is part two. Links to part one are in the description. In this section, I'll talk about different techniques such as sculpting, texturing, and lighting to make your snowman look a little bit more realistic. If you like what I do, then do check out the Black Friday sale on Game Dev TV, which has all my in-depth courses for only $10 each. And there's even some exceptionally priced bundle deals on there for things like Unity, Unreal, and Blender. So use the coupon code and the link in the description for those great deals. The skills we're looking at today are more beginner slash intermediate immediate level. So if you were comfortable in the first tutorial, you should find this okay. So the first technique that I'm going to show you is about joining our big snowballs together and sculpting them. So we're in the shading tab still, so I'll go back to layout. I'll select my three snowballs and I'm going to join them together. Now the command to join is control J, but just be aware that they will join to the active object, which is the one highlighted the more yellowy orange. So when I press control J now, they all share that origin point for the bottom one and they actually share the name now, which was actually the original default cube. I'll rename this snowman and it's down the bottom there. Okay, so they're joined together, but they haven't actually merged together. So if I scroll in, you can see that they have still got these inside faces here and we can actually merge these together in the sculpting workspace. So I'll go across to sculpting and here's our three kind of separate objects within this one object. We're into sculpt mode here, which you can see across here. I'll just bring out my brushes so you can see the names. Now before sculpting, if I start sculpting with the draw brush, just using my mouse and sculpt this section here, you can see that that joined area, which hasn't merged, isn't connecting very well. I'll just undo that. Instead, I'm going to use a remesh to remesh this all into one object. The important bits are the voxel size and the remesh option here. And an easy way to see that is to press Shift R and you can see the actual size of the faces that it will make when it remeshes and I can move my mouse side to side if I want more detail or less. So I'll try 0.05, somewhere around there, which might be different for you depending on the scale of your object, but I'll left click there to set the voxel size and there's a remesh command here or you can press Control R, so that's Shift R and Control R. So there we go, we've got our remeshed object. It's looking a little bit blocky at the moment. We can easily smooth that out. I can come right down to the bottom here and where it says Mesh Filter, I can change this across to the Smooth up the top here, click and drag, and it smooths it out to somewhere around here, I think. And now we've got that sort of merge together, which is quite nice. If I scroll up to the top a bit more, you can start to use something like the clay brush. I'll make my brush nice and big with F, so F to resize. You've also got the options here with radius and strength. Shift F is the shortcut for strength, but I'll just keep it at 0.5. And then we can start sort of using the clay brush like this and left click to start sculpting. Holding down control and left clicking, we'll dig inwards. So that's the clay brush. You can experiment with all these other brushes as well, like clay strips, which you can sort of see there. And you can add lots of variation to your shape. Now, if you want to up the detail, then we go back to the remesh and we choose a lower voxel size. And that's obviously much easier. If I press Shift R, I can see my voxel size, bring it right down to something like 0.2, somewhere around there, control R to do a remesh, and you can see we've got much more detail. And I can then dig in, probably best with the clay brush, digging in sometimes. And I'm doing this all with the mouse. I actually prefer using a display tablet. So add some variation across your shape. Hold down shift to smooth, but you might want to change the strength of the smooth brush just here. So the smooth brush just there, bring the strength down if you still want to keep some of that blobbiness and don't smooth it out too much. The higher the detail of your mesh, the less effect the smooth has. So you'll need to up the strength if you've got a higher resolution mesh. So back to the clay brush. And you can see I've added a fair bit of detail there, which makes it look more like a snowman. The other brush that you might be interested in is the crease brush here. And you can crease these shapes together a little bit if you need to. Okay, so we've added some sculpted detail to our snowman. Let's go back to the shading tab and see what that looks like. Well, that's not bad. It's a little bit shiny. We could do with some finer detail but we can add that quite easily with a texture. So the next skill is texturing. So at the moment we've got just a simple principle BSDF, which is white. It's got a bit of shininess because the roughness scale is at 0.4 and you can kind of see that shininess coming out there. And it kind of looks a little bit plasticky or maybe a bit like melted snow. What we can do is download a snow texture and plug it in. And it's useful to use a PBR texture. You can find out more about PBR materials in my video about PBRs, card in the corner now and link in the description. For now, I'll just show you where you can get it from and quickly how you can hook it up. So there's a nice site called 3dtextures.me and they've got four really nice snow textures that you can use for free and you can try out each of them. If you click on the texture, you do get a fair bit of advertising. You get even more adverts on the next page. Just scroll down 
and you can find download all the maps just here. There's also a buy me a coffee link for the texture if you want to help this artist out. Here are all the different maps that you need and you can download them as a zip file there. Links to this site are in the description. So once we've got that PBR material, there's a really quick way to hook it up to our principled BSDF. For this, you'll need the Node Wrangler installed. It does make it much easier. So follow me going up to Edit, Preferences, onto Add-ons, type in Node, and there's the Node Wrangler. Just make sure that's ticked. This is a really helpful add-on that will speed up your workflow. Then you can close this down. Now with that enabled, I'll just make my shader editor a bit bigger. We can select our principled BSDF and hold down Control, Shift and press T. Then it will ask you where your file is for the snow. And whenever I download a PBR texture set, I put them into a folder like this. So find your folder, select all those images, not the original material there, and press principled texture setup. Now that sets it up really nicely for us, just like this. There are a few changes we need to make. I'll just even it out a bit so you can see what it's doing. We've got the color going into the color, the roughness going into the roughness, and the normals going into the normal. We've also got a displacement texture, which will only work in cycles, which we'll talk about in a moment. The problem we have is it's not sitting very nicely on our snowman. That's because it's using the UVs at the moment, but our snowman hasn't been unwrapped properly. So we're not going to use that. We're going to use a nice easy method, which is the object. So if I zoom in here, you can see the object, plug that into the vector. It ends up looking like this because each of these are using a flat projection method. We need to change each of these to box. So across all of them and change them all to box. So it's looking a bit better, but if we zoom in, we can see these edges. If I come back up to the top with our color, that's the blend. And if I change the blend to something like 0.5, you can see it blending that texture together. So we need to do that for all of them. So just quickly put that up to roughly 0.5. I'll be nice and quick with it. It won't make too much difference if they're a little bit out and we've got our snow texture there. Okay, so it's not looking amazing at the moment. We can change the scale of our snow just here. So if I click and drag over all three of these, I can change this to let's say 0.5 and see what that looks like. And I think already it's looking a little bit more like the snow that I want. Looks a bit strange in contrast to the floor at the moment, which is pure white, so it looks a bit dirty. So let's change the floor as well. Let's select that and give it the same material. So in this drop down here, I can choose that material. I should really change the name, but let's just pick on that for now. I can change the name to snow. And you can see the floor now has the same material, which is making it look a little bit less dirty. I can create a new material from this as well. So new material here and call this snow floor. Then I can change the scale and make this a bit higher. So something like two. And we're starting to see the snow on the floor. Now what you can do is sculpt a little bit on your floor to make it a bit of a lumpy snow. Or we can do something a bit simpler, just scale it up a bit into edit mode, right click and subdivide. Down here we've got subdivide options and we can say number of cuts and we'll say 20. And that's great. Then we can use the proportional edit, which we talked a little bit about earlier. Click on that, go to vertex mode and choose a vert and move it upwards. And use our circle of influence to make our affected region much bigger and just move these around until we've got a bit more of a landscape. Okay, so back to object mode, see what that's looking like. And we're starting to get there with this a little bit more. The next stage for a bit more realism is the lighting. So let's go across to the render workspace. That will show the results of our lights, but we kind of lose that nice HDRI in the background that we get in material preview mode. This is the HDRI, which you can actually see in the background, that's lighting our scene. So it's giving it a nice natural light. Back to rendered mode. We can change that by coming across to the object settings, go across to world. I'll press the home key to find my nodes, zoom out just a touch, and I want to add an environment texture to the beginning here. So Shift A to add, texture, and then environment texture. Make sure you choose an environment texture, not an image texture, which lots of people make that mistake. So click on the environment texture. You can plug that in now, but you'll get a purple background because there's no image in there. So let's open one up. I find my images from Polyhaven, which has loads of HDRIs on there. Links in the description. It doesn't have to be particularly high resolution, and I actually found a snowy field one on their site. So I'll open that up. And now we've got that snowy field background and our snow is looking a lot better now and matching up a bit more to the snow in the background. I can probably change the floor texture and scale it up a little bit. So let's go back to the object and just try some different scales, something like five, select them all again, three. We're getting a little bit closer. Now a touch more advanced is if you feel like the base color here, if I hold down control shift and left click, that way I can just see what the base color looks like on its own. You can see the base color there has a lot of black areas in it. And I think that's a little bit too much. 
So we can add a color ramp in here to take out some of the darkness of the image. So I'll press Control, Shift, left click back on the principal BSDF to show that. Shift A to add and under converter, we've got color ramp. Just put that in between there. And at the moment, it'll be exactly the same as the base color. So I'll Control, Shift, left click on that and then Control, Shift, left click on the color ramp and they're identical. But if I change this black and put it up a little bit to something like gray, we can see we're lightening those darker areas. And we're getting a little bit closer to the snow in the background there. Probably the scale needs to come down a little bit, so we'll change that to two, and it's a lot closer. The only thing is we need to copy this color ramp, so Control C, and on our snowman texture, so snow there, Control V, and paste that in to there. And then we've got a much better looking snowman on the floor just there. The last thing for this section, we might want to go across to our render settings. If you change across to cycles, you'll certainly get a bit more realism with the snow and you'll get that sort of nice textured look. Just change across to my GPU to make that a bit faster and put adaptive sampling on again to make it a bit quicker. Or if you want to use Eevee, you might just want to turn things like the ambient occlusion up a little bit to give it sort of shadows on the floor and screen space reflections to give it a little bit of reflection. I think in this case Cycles is doing a lot nicer job, so I'd probably want to keep it on that. The only thing I'm finding with Cycles is that the bump of the snow on the snowman seems a bit too much. So if I select the snowman and come down to the displacement texture, we can turn this down to something like 0.1 and get much smoother snow. It seems to be working alright for the floor, but not for the snowman. So there we go, using sculpting and texturing and lighting, we've got a nice snowman image. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.